how do you deal with it? How do you deal with chaos? The chaos of a world that gets more chaotic every day. You have mass shootings. You have prices going through the roof. You have politics getting nastier and nastier. And of course, the list could go on and on. And, and, and that's just the human stuff. Mother Nature seems to be getting a lot more chaotic too. You've got wildfires and droughts and of of course, this virus that will not go away. And now, we've got hurricane season. Yay! And let's not forget a war in Europe. How do you get some sense of order in all that chaos? How, how do you find peace in a world that seems to have so little when the world seems to be losing it, how do you keep it? How do you not let all this chaos around you settle within you? More crucially, how does our world find a way back? A way back from the chaos, the ugliness of these days. In these words, God points the way. Let's listen and hear what God has to say. We begin at the beginning. The first chapter of Genesis, the very first verse. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos. And darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And then these words from Paul's letter to the church at Colossae. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in Christ all things in heaven and in earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through Christ and for Christ. He himself is before all things, and in Christ all things hold together. Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that Christ might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through Christ, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. When the world seems to be losing it, how do you keep it? How do you find peace in a world that feels less peace all the time? In these words, God tells you, it all came out of love. And the more connected you are to the love, the more the world gets connected to the love, the better everything becomes. Do you see it? Do you see how all of God shows up right from the beginning? You've got everyone there, the whole band, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, okay, before you can see that, you need to see this first. You've got to see how, when you know this, when you know who God truly is, that this is who God truly is, it helps you not only see God, it helps you see everything. That at the heart of everything is relationship, is love. See, that's what Christians mean when we talk about God as a trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Put very simply, God exists as a relationship, a living relationship of love. That's who God is. And if God is love, then God cannot be alone. God must have love going on right there within God. 
You cannot do loving by yourself. It's amazing what you can remember from seventh grade history. Now, I don't remember how much history I learned, but I do remember this little ditty uh, that our teacher taught us. I love myself, I think I'm grand. When I'm in the park, I hold my hand. I wrap my arms around my waist. And when I get fresh, I slap my face. Very nice, isn't it? Beautiful poetry. That, it's a cute song, but it makes a good point. You cannot really love yourself like that. It's silly. And if that was the only love going on inside God, that would make God, well, very self-involved, narcissistic even. And that's scary. Who wants a God like that? No, this God, this God that exists, exists as a relationship, a living relationship of love. And God has revealed God's self to us in just that way, as a living relationship. So you have, using the biblical language, the Father, who you could say initiates the relationship, the Son who responds, and the Spirit is sort of the living dynamic between the two. None of those are God alone, but together their love creates God. A God who is living love. And that love created, well, everything. Two writers, Eldridge and Curtis, put it this way. They said, we are created out of the laughter of the Trinity. But not only did you get created that way, everything did. Out of that love, out of that joy, out of that delight. Have you ever seen how little kids never get tired of things? They see something that delights them, and what do they want? They want it again and again. When my niece Lauren was three, I showed her how you could slide down this little ramp that was built in a closet in my parents' house. And she particularly loved seeing how I slid down it. So what did I do? I slid down it again and again and again. I can still remember her crying out in delight, do it again, Uncle Ken, do it again. And what if God is like that? The writer G.K. Chesterton put it this way, it is possible that God says every morning, do it again to the sun, and every evening, do it again to the moon. It may not be automatic necessity that makes all daisies alike. It may be that God makes every daisy separately, but has never gotten tired of making them. And this God, this God who is love, who delights in everything, shows up right at the beginning. So you have God's Spirit moving over the chaos. And then this God initiates by speaking. And this Word then goes forth. And the Word creates order out of chaos, light and dark, sun and moon, earth and sea, plants and animals, human beings. And all of that, this living love delights in, calling it good again and again. And again, that's the world in which you live. A universe, a reality created out of delight, out of love. A reality built on love, on relationship. And the more we understand the universe, the more we understand how wondrously connected everything that exists is. For decades now, we've known that particles exist that affect one another over almost measureless distances. Scientists call it entanglement. And these particles get so entangled that what happens to one particle happens instantly to the other particle, even if that particle is billions of miles away. Technologies like quantum computers are built on this fact. You and I live in a universe that is that intimately connected, even entangled with one another. How could it be otherwise? The very being that lies at the heart of everything is a being rapturously entangled in love. 
Yet what happens if you lose touch with the love, if you get disconnected from the love that created you? You can deny that connection, that relationship, but the connection still exists. So now, it is the disconnection from the love that ripples and spreads out beyond you to others. For when you get disconnected from the love, that disconnection does not only impact you. It sends ripples out. Ripples that affect, that entangle in awful ways the lives of others sometimes for decades to come. It's been clear for a while. What happened in Uvalde did not start in Uvalde. It began 20 years before and a thousand miles away. For that's when the slow motion riot began. How does a riot begin? Does it begin when suddenly a bunch of people randomly <laughs> decide to go break windows and wreak havoc? No. It begins when one person who has been dying to throw a rock through a window does it. And nearby stands another person who, if he sees someone throw a rock, might throw one too. So he throws. And, and then another, a few feet away, who might do it if two people do it, she throws a rock. And then there's two or three folks whose threshold is, say, three folks throwing. And then they start throwing rocks. And by the time you get to 50 folks throwing rocks through windows, wrecking havoc, all sorts of people start getting infected. Before you know it, you have hundreds of people throwing rocks, wreaking havoc. That explains how so many law-abiding people went crazy at the Capitol on January 6th. They got infected by the riot, by the fear, by the anger, by the rage, by the disconnection from the love. About 20 years ago, two broken, angry, alienated teenagers in Columban, Colorado, kicked off a slow-motion riot. For the script for killing that they created when they massacred their fellow students at Columbine High School infected others. In the eight years after Columbine, our nation suffered 12 more school mass shootings. And in two-thirds of those, the shooters made explicit reference to the killers at Columbine. In the 11 school shootings in the other parts of the world in those years, over half clearly mimicked Columbine. And the infection has been getting worse and worse, leading more and more troubled young people to not only get infected by the unthinkable, but to act on it. So children die Victims of a disconnection that is infecting too many. Suicide and terrorism infect others in the same way, leading to the death of thousands, even millions. You see, we are all entangled with one another. And if you are entangled together in love, then that love can be so powerful, so beautiful. For whatever you are entangled in, you will spread to others. And if it's not love you will spread that too. Do you remember when Facebook first came out? I loved it. <laughs> I connected with friends I had not seen in years. And I felt the love. It felt social. A post from a friend a thousand miles away would bring me joy or lead me to reach out in support. You'd see complete strangers come together again and again to help a family or a child in need. It was amazing. Heck, this past week, the music director of my old church, Lorna, wrote a nice comment on Facebook about our prayer shawls for Uvalde that we blessed here last week. Now, I have not seen Lorna in 
15 years. I haven't talked to her in a decade. But I'm still feeling the love from her words on Facebook. That's powerful. But soon other entanglements began to spread on social media. Anger, self-righteousness, ugliness. Now those entanglements have infected millions, maybe billions. It's infected me a few times. Have you ever posted something to Facebook or other social media that you regretted? If so, it likely infected you too. And now too often social media feels, well, antisocial. That's why I'm always encouraging you to share our post from the church on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram. Because we post stuff that shares the love. And Lord knows social media can use as much love as it can get to be shared. But how do you get free of getting infected with the ugliness? How do you find peace and love in a world more and more captured by resentment and self-righteous judgment? How do you get connected more to the love, even get joyfully entangled in it? You realize this love has never stopped reaching out to get entangled with you. Do you realize right in the center of reality, in the dance of love that is God, your DNA is hanging out? Why? This God, this divine word that created everything became human, with human DNA. God got born as a baby. And Jesus, this God, got dirty and dusty, played with his friends, delighted in in a glass of wine and a good joke. And in Jesus, this God got willingly entangled in our ugliness, our evil, so much so that the ugliness and evil killed him. But Jesus got entangled, yes, but Jesus never got infected. No, the light of Jesus' love shone into that darkness, even into the darkness of death, and that darkness could not stand against it. No, that light shone and nothing could stop it. That light shines still into your darkness, into my darkness, into the world's darkness. To free us from it, to free you from it, to bring you home, to bring you back into the love. And that love will not stop until everything, everything gets reconciled in heaven and on earth. Jesus will not stop until everyone and everything is joyfully entangled in the love once again, including you. How does that begin? That love living in you. It begins with realizing how intimately God is with you right now, right here. It begins with seeing how far God went to bring you home. How in Jesus, God gave up his home to give you one. How God gave up his life to give you life forever. How God even gave up the love so that you might have love without end. It begins with letting down barriers of distrust, facing up to where you are entangled in the ugliness, to let Jesus get closer, close enough to untangle you, to heal you, to free you, to draw you into his love. And as you let Jesus draw you into his love, then you get to be part of spreading that love to others. For whatever you are entangled in, you will spread to others. And imagine how powerful spreading that love with Jesus could be. You and I spreading love and grace, compassion and kindness, joy and peace to neighbors far and wide. In fact, this week, my wife and I have been thinking about one simple and powerful way we could spread that love with others. Imagine beginning, say, in late October, every Friday night, we open our patio out there from 6 to 9 
for food and drink, music and conversation, a Friday night social. Each week, a few people host it so no one gets overwhelmed. We provide seed funds to help buy the food and drink, the wine, the beer, the drinks, the fine foods, just to get it started. We put out a basket for anyone to give whatever they want to give. And anyone and everyone could come. We don't do it with any agenda, no Jesus shoe that we drop in the middle, just the agenda of love, of sharing the love, of inviting and welcoming everyone to get a little more connected, even entangled with one another. People might start talking about us, about our Friday happy hours, open to whoever wants to come. Imagine that. A church known for its happy hour. Wouldn't that be cool? It could even go viral. And who knows how far the love will spread. What brokenness it will heal. What loneliness it will alleviate. What joy it will bring. What grace it will give. So yes, it is getting chaotic out there. But the Spirit is still sweeping over the waters to bring peace. And the Father is still creating the light, calling the world good. And the Word is still speaking, speaking love into every broken place, holding everything together. And that love is the amen of the universe. That love is the end of the story. That love is the dawn that always breaks through the darkness. So let the Spirit sweep into you. Let the light shine into you. Let the love speak into you. Remember, it all came out of love. And the more connected you are to the love, the more the world gets connected to the love, the better everything becomes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen.